Transformation of the hosting business. Our next topic here at the dot-com track, our panel discussion will be moderated by Dr. Christian Boeing, formerly known as CEO of Strato and CSMO of Ionos One and One. Welcome, Christian, and your four panelists. Hello, everybody. The next topic of our roundtable that is coming up right now is the name transformation of hosting business to meet evolving web pros requirements. And we have some really, really interesting guests here on stage on our virtual stage at CloudFest, uh, which are first Ruslan from Zelastic. Hello, guys. And then we have Jan from Plesk. Hi. Hello. Hi. And Tim from Reclaim Hosting. Hi. Nice to see everyone. And last but not least, Mike from Virtuoso. Hi, everybody. Hi, Mike. Nice to meet you. So before we go into detail and discuss what web pros developments are about and what the recent trends are about, uh, let's start with a short introduction of each and everybody. And uh, so please introduce yourself. Who are you? What company are you working for? What kind of role do you have? Ruslan, can you start? Yes. So my name is Ruslan. I am co-founder and CEO of Gelastic. Gelastic is a multi-cloud platform as a service, which is designed to help hosting service providers to transform their traditional business with modern cloud technologies and offerings. Our product helps end customers to focus on the business core value instead of spending time and efforts on infrastructure management and middleware configurations. Thank you. Jan, what's, what's your role? Yeah, my name is Jan. I'm CTO of Plesk and have been in the web hosting industry for just about 20 years. And at WebPros, I'm in charge of product management and R&D for products like Sovi, Solus.io, lots of extensions uh, like our well-known WordPress toolkit and, of course, Plesk itself. Thank you. And Mike from, uh, no, sorry, Tim from uh, Reclaim. Can you introduce yourself sure. as well? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Tim Owens. I'm one of the co-founders of Reclaim Hosting, which is a web hosting provider that's focused on the educational community. We serve hundreds of colleges and universities across the world, and, and we've grown uh, from a small company to serve a rather large audience over the past eight and a half years. Very good. Thank you. And last but not least, Mike from Virtuoso. Hi, yeah, I'm uh, Mike. I'm product manager at Virtuoso with 18 years hands-on experience with uh, system containers already. And uh, some call me the father of Virtuoso containers, uh, driving the innovation of the product and looking for new markets, enabling our hosting partners uh, to grow. And of course, I'm always looking for new and very cool, unique features. Thank you. Okay, you see, we have a very broad audience here, and we have uh, some real experts in their in their field, and especially when we're talking about web pros. So, before we start discussing the recent trends that we have, let's start and uh, have a look at in the back and the, the past, where yeah, where I want to understand what's up, what has happened in the last five years, four years, uh, because our topic is transformation of the business, and we should know or discuss what transformation has gone on. Tim, can you help us as you are the only hosting guy here and <laughs> owning or founding a hosting company? Um, can you help us on, on summarizing the trends that we had in the last five years? Well, it's, it's interesting for us because from our perspective, we started as a very small company eight and a half years ago, and we were very much a cPanel focused shop. We were using that in part because for us to get started, it was very easy. And at the time, I think the needs were very basic for a lot of people. They wanted to run WordPress, maybe Drupal and other PHP lamp based applications. Really, over the past five years, we've seen the technology stack really explode as very developer focused and a real need from people for more advanced technologies. They want to run Node.js apps. They want to run MongoDB. Uh, they want to run PostgreSQL and all these other various technologies, and they want to do it all for cheap. They kind of want to spin up and down. And so the movement towards the cloud has enabled developers to do that. And for us, using things like platform as a service, using things like Gelastic, we've been able to meet that need for, for more, you know, for the educational community and folks that aren't necessary de necessarily developers and needing a common user interface to be able to do that. Do you have an idea, Tim, 
what's the reason for that? Because I mean, that trend is there, understood, but um, but, but there must be something in the back and there's a reason for it. Yeah, I think um, I think for a lot of people, uh, the question of scale got brought up really quickly. You know, especially when we talk about universities, they're thinking, how can I serve websites for the entire campus for the global community? And certainly, uh, as you know, in the past year, it's been a real challenge. Everybody moving online. Suddenly, the question of everybody hitting sites simultaneously, everything getting pushed online, mm -hmm. questions of scale become a really big concern for folks, and they want to know. Is, is my website going to survive? You know, putting it on a dedicated server isn't always the best solution anymore. They want to know that it can expand and contract. They don't want to necessarily pay, pay for a large amount of resources if it's not getting used, but when they need it, they want to have it. And I think that's been a huge trend, even just in the last year, as we've seen with COVID and the move towards online. Yeah. And I mean, recently in the last, at least in the last 12 months, when the pandemic started to happen, uh, of course, a lot of changes occurred as well. Um, Jan, can you help us on explaining what has happened in the last year? What do you see due to the pandemic or what was there before? Absolutely. Yeah, the pandemic has had uh, hit uh, many companies and people really, really hard. And I've myself, several friends who own local businesses, which have seriously been impacted by the lockdown. However, they all had to reinvent themselves. They had no choice. They started selling stuff online, even, even food. And uh, what we can easily see, this amazing uptake in, in our data of cPanel and Plus servers across the globe with a special increase in e-commerce, um, mainly WooCommerce actually. Meanwhile, 21% of all worker sites powered by our popular Workers Toolkit, uh, and we are talking here about millions of websites are already e-commerce sites built with Plesk or cPanel and WordPress and WooCommerce. So as harsh as it may sound, we can literally say build your digital presence or die. Yeah. And can you put it in numbers, Jan or Tim? Do you have some, some numbers to publish, let's say, to, to see what the pandemic helped, especially in that web pro in, environment? So let's say, increases on virtual service, on virtualization, on selling class. Do you have some numbers to share? At least, Tim, you might probably have some numbers. We didn't do specific tracking. It's always hard to know when customers come. It's such a sensitive topic, right? You don't want to say, are, are they coming to us because it's in the middle of the pandemic and people you know, are struggling? You know, and you don't want to necessarily say that. We've certainly seen an uptick. I would say we've seen at least 50 to 60 percent growth as a result of this move online. And for us, our perspective in the educational community is less on the e-commerce side and more the move of all universities needing to be virtualized. You had before online learning was sort of this side thing that some schools did and some didn't. And then the pandemic, the pandemic really forced everybody to go online. Everybody had to go down into lockdown. And it was if you weren't doing online learning before, you had to get up to speed really quickly and do it. And that was where I think we were able to help some schools really um, be able to get their stuff published online, be able to scale and do things of that nature. Yeah. I mean, what is also happening right now is that that what I have heard and what I know is that virtual servers really, really were, were boosted. There's a lot of demand for virtual servers. Um, so, I mean, that is that is my question. We see that high demand, demand. we see that inflow at a lot of hosting companies. But, um, I mean, in times of containers and cloud, etc., is the classical virtual server, is it still uh, very suitable? product is it needed or is it something that uh, well probably belongs to the past in in a few months years or whatever um jan what what is your view on that yeah websites are I'm, I'm just, yeah websites are getting more and more tailored and, and dynamic now and that requires more infrastructure resources as you said and uh, individual capabilities for for developers and this influences a constant move actually from shared hosting to vps so that's what we can see at the moment um, and uh, especially according to our statistics, we can clearly see a trend towards many virtual servers powering just a few websites instead of high density shared hosting with uh, uh, thousands of sites per server. So this trend is also driven by the amazing growth of the hyperscalers uh, on, the, on the other side. And um, yeah, Plesk and cPanel, they simplify server site and app management significantly and our preferred solution to build websites and web apps and on VPS. What we, on the other side, don't see so much is then the horizontally scaling um, uh, websites or web apps. 
That's of course something that's on a great big growth path, um, but it's more happening in the enterprise segment. And so if we look at all websites worldwide, so 370 million registered domains, um, then this is, uh, at least until now, less an, uh, an effect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mike, what is your view on the traditional virtual server? Well, for traditional VPSs, um, they are usually just a single virtual environment. It can be a container or a virtual machine owned by usually a single customer. Uh, and they usually pay it with some kind of monthly fixed subscription. Um, and majority of those customers, they deploy only a couple of static services like a web server, a mail server, a VoIP server, VPN servers um, on top of it. And they require only a static IP address. Uh, and they host their domain there. There's still a market for it uh, because a lot of people just require their own VPS for uh, doing such kind of hosting. And they require a management panel uh, like Flask for, for doing all these management uh, tasks like creating mail addresses, uh, creating domains, uh, and so on. Uh, so there's still a huge demand for it. But um, the used resources and the resource pattern has a very small gap between lowest and highest um, used amount uh, without a lot of uh, huge spikes. So if a traditional VPS requires more resources, the customer usually goes to the control panel of the service provider and upgrades uh, their plan um, to a larger one. But on the other side, um, with a cloud VPS, uh, this static sizing problem will be solved uh, and resources are usually changed on the fly. This is um, the biggest difference and where the market is going right now. I mean, you're, you're touching another topic that we should discuss, which is, uh, the, the need for cloud hosting, cloud business hosting. What do you think? Why do service providers consider moving into cloud hosting business? Um, Ruslan, can you help yeah. us on that question? Yeah, I can give some feedback about this. Um, as Tim mentioned, uh, people deploy more sophisticated solutions. Like, you know, they need scalability because they, uh, it's much easier today to get popular um, to get traffic to your website. So more services became popular, they get traffic, they need the scalability. And also not only scalability, like, you know, deploying everything manually and configuring everything, like deploying security patches and so on. It's a lot of work, like, and many teams just don't want to spend a force on this. Uh, they want to focus on the core value business. This is the reason why they're looking for more advanced solutions. This is the reason why they demand from hosting service providers to provide such solutions that are scalable, highly available. You know, like uptime is very important for any serious business. And using just one VPS is not going to work because like every hardware fails. Like if data center fails, like you, you lose money. So this is the reason why people try to build this you know, heavyability and scalability and uh, redundancy and, and so on. So, but to do this manually, it's it's a lot of work. Like you spend a lot of energy to you know just to get up and running. I am not talking even about like doing main, maintenance of this uh, complex topologies. Like so, but tools, cloud tools, can help you. So you just choose the required stack, you get the cluster, and it's scalable by default. This is what people are looking for today. And this is why uh, cloud hosting service providers are looking for solution for um, a tool to um, offer um, and customers. Tim, do you share these opinions with your customers? Do you have the same experience when you listen to them? I do. And I think, you know, that's an important point about time. It's not always about the ability to do it, you know, uh, for there may be developers that feel comfortable enough working with things like AWS tools. But for a lot of folks, when it's, you know, fully API driven or it's really meant for a team of developers to build out solutions, it's a non-starter specifically for our community where they're looking for a platform that can sit on top of those types of providers, that can sit on top of the actual services and provide an interface for them to be able to do that. The need is there, but time is money and not, nobody has all of the time to set up sort of, you know, the, the master slave configurations and databases to set up that horizontal or vertical scaling and things. They, they, they could do it, but they'd rather spend their time building the application, you know, scaling that and serving the needs of their customers. And so I definitely think that's a trend that we're seeing for sure. And, yeah, and, and, and one more input from, from my side, uh, look like uh, if we talk about one project that is focused, one team that is focusing on one project, 
it's still like you know they can handle this but if we talk about web agencies when they handle many projects for different customers it's a lot of work to do like you know and it's fun when you do it first time but when you do it like you know uh, like 10 times like or 20 times it's not fun anymore like, so mm -hmm. that's that's the point mm -hmm. so i mean you you started talking about examples that you see where, where let's say examples of customers who did uh, cloud hosting transformation but also hosting companies who did it um ruslan do you have more good examples of this kind of transformation for sure, for sure. um almost every Elastic hosting uh, partner went through this transformation because in the past they were offering like VPSs or like shared hosting, but it became a bottleneck for the further um, growth. So um, they came to us and, and to seek solution for this. So again, like we have um, more than hundred data centers uh, in our uh, community, we help them to transform to new cloud offerings. Uh, but also another good example is, for example, DigitalOcean, right? So they started from like plain, simple virtual machines, but later they added more advanced tools like database as a service, Kubernetes as a service, and recently like application platform as a service. Because they 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 hear what the customer the customers request, they know where the demand is coming. So this is very good example of recent transformation. And in terms of of percentages. How many of the web hosting companies uh, customers do you see being on a rather more professional level than on a let's say beginner level where they simply launch a website or a business online card or whatever you call it? Uh, do you have an idea, Ruslan or Tim? So look, uh, in our case, it really depends on our partner because uh, we are a software company, but we collaborate with partners in different countries. And uh, it depends on which niche our partner focuses, right? Because, for example, Tim and his team um, are focusing on educational projects, right? So in other countries, uh, our partners are focusing on e-commerce. Another example can be like more large scale project like enterprises. It really depends on the experience of our partner. So I cannot tell you numbers I can uh, in general, but um, across our part, um, partners, the majority of their customers are ISVs, web developers and web agencies. You know, like that's the majority of um, customers that run projects on top of our partners. And and Ruslan, when you mention agencies, I think that's a, a good example. You know, while the university itself might be our customer, they're serving the needs of thousands of students. And those students, yeah, they need to just get a website up and running quickly. They want to run WordPress. They don't really care how it's running or anything like that. The university wants a platform that they know can scale that WordPress instance, that it can serve 30,000 blogs, uh, you know, on any given semester. And so the agency themselves, they have the needs to work with us and see those cloud platforms, whereas the, the students and the end users in that scenario, they have much more basic needs. And so I think that that's a, a bit of a shift for us. Yeah. yeah, let me also add some some numbers here. So we did uh, research uh, across the whole uh, hosting market and, and scanned thousands of service providers. And um, what I can share here is that 80% of uh, uh, hosting providers actually offer VPS as a product. 65% um, uh, offer classical shared hosting. However, only 33% uh, uh, right now offer uh, WordPress hosting. However, this number has significantly increased uh, in, the, in the past two years. And this is where the most growth is actually coming from. And um, um, yeah, there, there you see that uh, um, a lot of partners shift now slowly to offering more solutions. And that's also what they should do. OK, OK. So thank you for sharing the numbers, Jan. Uh, I, I would have asked everybody each and every time again until I got those numbers. So thank you for, for sharing them. So uh, coming to the next topic, which is, and uh, we already touched this, the big cloud players. I mean, AWS and Azure, uh, they, most of the ISPs, they work together with them. They start cooperating with them. They start discussing with them. Um, they maybe influence the hosting market in the long run. Uh, so far, we don't really know. But I want to know, how do you see the big hyperscalers influencing our cloud hosting market? So. Jan, can you, can you share can some thoughts on that? Sure, and there's no doubt that hyperscalers have raised the bar for both uh, service providers and internal 
infrastructure teams. But hyperscalers like AWS and Azure are at least until now not directly attacking the hosting market on a pure website level. So it's always a matter of what you compare. Um, but what we can clearly see in our data is that more and more service providers get rid of their own data centers and use AWS and code to replace their infrastructure, especially solution providers like managed WordPress leaders, WP Engine, Kinsta, or Pagely, but also Wix as the most popular website SaaS provider, trust and use AWS and Google already as their platform. And moreover, services like DigitalOcean and AWS LightSail, but also Hetzner Cloud, for example, um, are growing nicely. And so eventually, uh, infrastructure service becomes a commodity and service providers uh, they, they need to build tailored solutions to, uh, for their target audience on top. And therefore, it's no longer a question of infrastructure, but of added value to the, to the actual user. Okay. Yeah, I, if, if you don't mind, I can add something too, because okay. I heard a lot of stories from our hosting partners uh, that their customers just migrated to Amazon, you know, and they were very disappointed, like they were not, not able to retain this customer because they're just not able to offer, you know, like analogy kind of tools uh, to to meet uh, the requirements of the customers. And this is the reason actually why we try to help uh, hosting service providers. But also, so it means again, like uh, Amazon and uh, Google and Azure, they suck customers from hosting industry, like you know, like it, like it or not, like it's, it's reality. And uh, another good point that uh, hosting service providers consider to use their infrastructure instead of own infrastructure because it's just easier, like you know, to use something ready to go than build own solution. So, but from other side, there are still concerns about data privacy, data security. You know, like uh, many customers, specifically in, in European Union, they want to keep data within the country. And even more, they want that this data is operated by a local company, not a company that is headquartered in the United States. So like these questions, you know, they um, they come to the agenda and like GDPR was introduced, you know, like to regulate like specifically data location, where it's stored, like and who has access to this data. So like um, these big vendors, they significantly influence uh, the game. We need to watch them, what they do, uh, but hosting service providers should not give up uh, because they have um, uh, specific uh, um, benefits to offer to customers in local countries. So they just need to find this focus, like this niche and do and go through this transformation. So that, that's my opinion. Yeah. What do you think? Will those giants, those hyperscalers, will they, at one time tap into the market and build something which is uh, uh, hosting at a click so just like the wordpress one click installations etc etc do you think that this thing is coming up jan Ruslan? yeah you see actually um already nice or oh, yeah interesting partnerships uh, look at uh, aws and godaddy what they have done so if you launch a droplet uh, no that's not called droplet if you uh, launch an instance on aws lightsail um, with a WordPress site, then they recommend you to um, uh, use uh, GoDaddy Pro sites as a um, managed WordPress uh, offering or like WordPress management solution. And that's a very interesting cooperation between the those giants. And I see that this is more happening. If hyperscalers go into that market, yes, probably over time. And you see that Google is trying that, um, especially in the WordPress area. Um, so I I'm sure that we can expect more over the next years. But do you expect more corporations or do you expect really development mm -hmm. and opening up or launching their own solutions? Absolutely both. Um, I don't see uh, AWS, for example, building a site builder like Wix. So this will be more cooperation, uh, but there might be other things where um, those giants just uh, build own solutions where it makes sense. Okay, got yeah. it. Thank from, you. From, from, from my experience, uh, as we are working with uh, mid large kind of uh, projects, what we see like um, data centers, big data centers, they're not talking anymore about, you know, like one data center, they want like multiple locations and they talk about multi cloud. So they want to offer own infrastructure together, integrated with Amazon and Azure. That's what I got you uh, recently from like a conversation with large telco, like, you know, that are going to offer cloud services, for example. And I see same pattern with small and hosting service providers. They started from own infrastructure, but later they added regions from Amazon like to their offers, like, you know. 
but they still offer extra value on top of it. Like it's managed, it's uh, better simplicity, you know, like it's more automation and the end. Like, so I believe uh, there is enough food for everyone, but we need to be very careful with this big yes, sure. Yeah. Another trend that is also really biasing or, or touching down on uh, our industry is container, containerization. So uh, it is happening everywhere and it has probably influenced cloud hosting and it probably has also transformed the hosting business. Uh, Mike, you are the expert on, on containers, etc. Can you help us uh, explaining what has happened in the past and how the transformation uh, yeah, has happened in the past? Um, yeah, for System containers were a revolutionary step um, and changed the hosting landscape dramatically. Um, historically, when they appeared roughly about uh, 20 years ago, uh, they were only dedicated servers. Uh, Hardware-assisted virtualization with, for example, para virtualized drivers, uh, they didn't exist at that time. So containers significantly decreased, uh, increased the margin per physical server. Uh, while decreasing TCO, reducing required capacity and space in a data center, uh, lowering the power consumption significantly. And lastly, uh, system containers uh, were the door opener for hosting providers to enter the mass market. Uh, this is uh, very, very important. And they could start offering hosting plans from $5. Uh, before, without containers, this was just not possible. And right now, a similar shift uh, happens, uh, uh, started a couple of years ago when application containers uh, become available um, from Docker, for example, and they narrow down the OS level isolation uh, to particular applications. So right now it's possible with um, an application container to isolate databases from uh, the web server. Uh, you can, for example, isolate a WordPress installation from its uh, content, which is stored inside a MariaDB or MySQL database. And uh, this gives much more flexibility. So you can decouple applications uh, from a physical node. Um, you can put databases in an application container on node A, uh, web server on another node, and so on. And uh, they can also, this shift is happening right now, you can start orchestrate them uh, via standard APIs, um, for example, via Kubernetes or via the help of Jelastic, um, for example, just to build very good um, high dense application containers. And where's the trend going? Going? What do you expect in the future, Mike? Yeah, I, uh, uh, Rosan, you can answer as well. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I can. I can give my answer. So I, I love this topic. Just you know, like when first time, like I met containers, I felt in love immediately. Like why? Why? Because you know, like they're more elastic and they're more scalable. They're more dense. Like, but. In the past, it was available only for system administrators. So system administrators had a nice tool, you know, they played with this, they increased hosting service providers, increased density, margin, fine. But developers, you know, like they did not have access to this, like it was no solution. And Docker changed this game. Docker introduced containers for developers, so these application containers. And then like, you know, a lot of guys joined in this movement. And what's going on now, where is the transformation is coming? So developers and teams, they're building solution from the beginning based on containers. So using cloud native solar tools, uh, using microservices approach, and yeah. where they should host this now, you know, like you cannot go directly to VPS because it's like a lot of work to, to host such kind of sophisticated clustered solution. Like, so they need advanced cloud solutions. And this is the reason why hosting service providers need to implement containers offerings um today now like now because like maybe like tomorrow it will be too late like so but it will grow like a lot like almost every company we talk today they ask about containers kubernetes like and again like i'm not talking about very like small guys that are hosting static files like i'm talking mostly about guys that are building home and SaaS service so but again like it will grow even more yeah and uh, also i want to add something uh, it becomes more like uh, it's part of the DNA for developers to use containers. So it, they they noticed already that containers is the approach to go. They can do all these lifecycle management uh, completely with containers for their applications they develop or they just use. Got it. So thank you about that. So uh, when we come to the last few minutes that we have, of course, I mean you are vendors of the both hosting and cloud industry, 
And we should also talk about your products, your innovations that you have released or um, published recently. So can we make a short wrap up on each and everybody? What do you have? What kind of innovations do you release recently? And what do you have in the pipeline? Uh, Jan, can you, can you make a start with it? Of course. So we are focusing on delivering great innovation, solving uh, real life problems of web developers and simplifying their lives. As last year, we've released uh, the popular WordPress toolkit also on cPanel, which is meanwhile the most used software for managing WordPress sites. Another highlight is Solus.io, our new cloud management platform that enables service providers to build, run, and scale successful cloud services with an incredible user experience similar to DigitalOcean and including integrated billing with WHMCS and Hostbill. And what's coming up next, I can say that uh, this year will be absolutely exciting for our partners, customers, and us. We've talked about the growing VPS and cloud hosting market. Um, however, the problem is that users struggle with setting up their systems properly, need lots of help, or end up with insecure or hacked service quickly. And we as Plesk, we continue to solve the real-life uh, real uh, pain points of those customers with our vision of the Plesk smart server technology. That's an autopilot mode for servers. So Blesk Smart Server makes using a server as easy as Pi enables uh, users to build professional websites within minutes. And that's all because um, the server configuration and website security is automated by Blesk. And additionally, uh, we've just acquired Nixstats, the easiest to use and most complete server monitoring solution out there. It's designed for web developers, easy to use, but also very powerful. And you can expect uh, seamless monitoring integrations into cPanel, Plesk, and Solus.io, delivering great value to all of our users. Um, there's much more that I could talk about, like the e-commerce hey, 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 I asked the wrong question, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I should have asked this question 15 minutes ago, but, but please give the others also the chance. Mike, what is your, what is your, your pipeline? <laughs> yeah, I would try to make it short. Uh, so, you know, we believe in system containers uh, for hosting, either in traditional or in cloud VPS business. Uh, so, therefore, we published recently a technology preview version of our management tool stack to manage native Windows Server 2019 containers. So, via LibVirt and via our management tools uh, with online resource resize capabilities and so on. Uh, besides this, uh, we've recently published Virtuoso Linux 7 and 8, which is a CentOS 7 and 8 replacement, fully open source, it's free. It's a straight one-to-one -one rebuild of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And later this year, we are also releasing live conversion utility to convert existing CentOS containers into VZ Linux directly from physical node without any access uh, to the data inside the containers. Very good. Sounds interesting. Ruslan, what do you have? Cool. So, yeah, short, short about our recent achievement. Um, starting from WordPress, as it's very popular topic, uh, we build solution to scale WordPress horizontally and to get high availability. So it's not like running in one VPS, it's running in multiple containers, like all levels are highly available. Database, application server, load balancing and storage. So it's it's very, very advanced one, Like and, but you don't need to spend the efforts to manage this now. So next one, Kubernetes, it's inside Elastic, it's production ready, people love it very much. So we released this uh, quite recently, I would say, and we're working on improvements. Also, very important, like we added ability to run containers and virtual machines on the same infrastructure. So we bring even more flexibility for hosting service providers to get more density at the end. And of course, multi-cloud, interoperability we work on this direction very hard like and we will print more tools to manage multiple locations and to do even like live migration from one data center to another one in short very good now we're now just Tim, just, just a moment. We're now stopping the advertising session, and we ask the only customer who's sitting in this panel here, which is you, Tim. Will you buy all this stuff? Absolutely. Well, and, and in fact, you know, we just rolled out. We're we're working on top of the Jelastic platform last year, and I was going to say it's allowed us 
to really back our platform up it, to be able to scale stronger, we've built 17 applications already for the system and added those as automated installers for our community and the demand is there. We want, we want to build even more applications on top of it. That's where the containerization is going and allowing us, you know, when developers build Docker Compose files, that allows us to really quickly turn that into an application installer that even a student could sign up with a trial account and be up and running in five minutes. And so it's really revolutionized for us what we're able to do with our community base. And we just plan to um, continue marketing that to um, allow universities to provide these kind of tools and to colleges throughout the world. Very good. So you can see that overall, we could spend another 30 minutes or hours of, of discussing these things and we would have not touched uh, everything. So, but thank you for the interesting discussion. Thank you for your insights and all the, the knowledge that you shared. Uh, and yeah, hopefully we see each other in person next next year in Rust again and having some drinks at the bar. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you guys. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Christian. You're welcome. Thank you so much to our five transformers for this exciting panel.